Right, day two of my little uh, SOTA trip. Um, I was going to do Kinder Scout today, but uh, to be honest, I'm still a little bit achy from uh, yesterday. I did Black Hill yesterday. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Kinder Scout off until tomorrow morning, probably do that tomorrow morning before I head home. So um, I've come to Shining Tour today, which is a slightly easier summit to get up. And um, you know, it's not quite so far or as steep. Um, it's meant to be quite good for VHF and certainly I've had uh, success operating VHF from here in the past. So uh, I'm going to try and activate this on uh, VHF. I've got the uh, old Yaesu FT290 with me, which I don't get to use very often. So um, we're going to give that a whirl. It's uh, depending on whether you have it on low power or high power, it's uh, half a watt out or two and a half watts out. So uh, it's quite an old rig. It's an 80s rig. Um, it's a portable rig. I wouldn't call it particularly uh, portable by today's standards. It's a bit big and bulky, but uh, still a lovely rig. So I'm going to give that a bit of a whirl up there. I've also got a linear amp, which I can um, boost the power up to around about 20, 30 watts I can get out of it with the uh, linear amp. So I'm going to go up the uh, hill and try and activate this on the uh, VHF. And um, if that fails, I've also got HF with me and I'll probably... Uh, I'll probably um, put out a few shouts on uh, 40 meters as well, just to uh, get a few uh, European contacts in the log. It would be a shame not to whilst I'm here. So uh, let's, uh, I'll, I'll round up my uh, bits and pieces and uh, get myself up the top of the hill. Nice little parking area at the start of here and uh, just up to the right of the screen, just at that junction is uh, what they reckon is one of the most dangerous roads here in England. It's uh, got quite a high accident rate. We're at roughly the halfway point and uh, if you look behind me you can see the track runs all the way up the hill there and uh, I can just about see on the top of the hill, I don't know if it'll come out on camera, probably not, but I can just about see the uh, summit cone up there. Um, the trouble is in true James fashion I've uh, got halfway up the hill and then realised that I've gone and left my uh, feeder cable in the car for, uh, for the VHF so uh, I've got, uh, I've got the mast and my antenna, but no feeder cable for it, which uh, isn't good. Uh, thankfully, I've, I bought HF as a backup, so uh, I've still got the NFED halfway for uh, 40 meters and uh, a nice short feeder cable, which goes behind, between, the, uh, between the 49 to one and the radio. So I can still run HF, but uh, VHF is a bit of a problem because I haven't got a feeder cable long enough to go from the radio to the antenna at the top of the mast. So, uh, whoops, uh, I think it's going to be an HF activation only. Whilst I was at the halfway point, I stopped and uh, took this panoramic view and it's it really is a lovely part of the country. It's not hard to see why uh, this is such a uh, popular SOTA summit. And uh, here you can see at the uh, summit, you have a couple of benches there. That's my operating position. And uh, I'm running an old ICOM uh, 703 into a 49 to 1 NFED. And uh, it's a 20 meter piece of wire NFED for 40 meters. And uh, you can see the wire goes up there. I've got a seven meter spider beam mast and you can just about see the wire coming down. And I've uh, tied it off on the wall there. Um, I'm having some debate as to whether this is a uh, inverted V or given how steep the wire goes up from the bench, maybe it's acting more like an inverted L, I'm not sure. But uh, if you're wondering why I'm doing this uh, as a voiceover in post-production, it's because things went slightly awry for me at this point. Um, it transpires that my wireless microphone, which I use, um, has a mute button on the side of it, which I... Uh, apparently not so um, I've got several bits of video footage without uh, any audio so uh, I did film the activation but there's very little point in me showing it to you because uh, you can't hear what I'm saying which was uh, a bit of a shame. Unfortunately I've made a bit of a blunder here this uh, this SOTA activation has turned into a bit of a disaster because uh, I filmed the activation but I forgot to turn the receiver on for the audio. I've got a wireless audio link for the uh, camera and I forgot to turn the uh, audio link on. So there's no 
audio on the uh, activation. So uh, there's not much point in me showing you that. But I mean, as activations go, it's reasonably successful. I've got about uh, probably six or seven contacts on um, on 40 meters. Uh, probably about five or six on uh, 20 meters. Um, and uh, I decided to give two meters a go. Now, I forgot the I forgot the feeder cable for the mast. So I've got the mast and I've got the antenna and I've got the radio, but no feeder cable, which is why I had to save it on uh, on um, HF. But uh, I've still got the handheld here. So I decided to uh, put out a few calls just on the handheld just to see what would happen. And uh, actually pleasantly surprised, I made about six or seven FM contacts as well. So uh, surprisingly successful for uh, just a little handheld. Unfortunately, uh, I forgot to charge the battery on this last night. So uh, it died halfway through a QSO. So I probably would have made more contacts. So uh, hey, I think this, uh, this sort of activation is a little bit uh, ill-fated today. I think, uh, I think the moral of the story is uh, better planning and better preparation. Mm -hmm.